Dear social media. I want to take this time to let you know that this relationship is officially over between us. And no, I don't want to hear any of your suggestions and I don't need the shoulder to lean on. And yeah, I'm writing you a letter. I know you said I could have Skyped to you or sapped to you or typed to you, but I prefer this method. And ironically, no matter how many times I complained about you doing the same, I had to eventually resort to pouring out my feelings on the page. But you know what? I'm sick of your attitude. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, let me list a few. Firstly, we argue way too much in public. And you make comments on things you know nothing about without watching your mouth. You're way too insensitive. I've seen you tell a pregnant woman that she needs to lose some weight. I've seen you ask a kid with Down syndrome what kind of weed has he been buying. You refuse to acknowledge the difference between a refugee and a migrant. And on top of that, how dare you embarrass me? You confuse Samuel Jackson with Lawrence Fishburne. That's close enough to blasphemy. That's Mace Window and Morpheus. And really, why are you always lying? Why are you always lying? And maybe that dear fat people was too negative or I'm way too sensitive. And you always say things about me to everyone else when I'm away. And then you smile in my face, spreading rumours, but I feel like a prisoner in this relationship because it's like a maximum security prison visit whenever we meet. Because you only feel comfortable to say things to me behind the glass screen. I mean, I remember when Tom first introduced us at MySpace. He told me you like my music, asked for my details. And I didn't see you again until Mark convinced me to approach you at Facebook. And like an old friend, you asked me to update you. I found out your relationship status was single, then eventually I went from updating you to actually I'm dating you. Back when I could bring you around my family and friends without fear of you judging me. Now it's become a contest of popularity. You say things you don't mean and mean things you don't say. You've adopted that McDonald's way. You care more about how the food looks than how it actually tastes. And you know that more people will buy into you if your value is reduced. So you care more about that than the quality of what you actually produce. And then every time I say something which you don't agree or some small success comes to me, instead of embracing that happily, you run away. So then you're going to find a more authentic version of me. I've seen you making googling eyes at other guys and girls. If this is an open relationship, let me know so I don't feel like I need to commit to you. I remember when you used to love my delivery. But maybe now you don't realise how much it's stressing me when you don't take time to make sure that you're correctly addressing me. Because now the only messages you send are attention-seeking ones which you hope get reposted over and over again till they get around. It's like we went from best friends to unsuccessful pen pals. And why is it you expect me to be perfect, but it's okay for you to be only human? You can adopt 140 characters and expect me to be just one. But despite this all, the main reason I'm ending it now and what hurts above all and is not worth the trouble is the fact that, I guess deep down, I realise that you could never love me. You could only ever like me.